Hi, everybody. Uh, hello, everyone. As the uh, disembodied voice said, I'm Peter Walker. I'm the head of insights at Carta. Um, thank you so much for coming to this short, brief chat around what's going on across startup world. We're going to touch on a whole lot of different data today, valuations, fundraising, compensation, secondary liquidity, dilution between rounds. So if you're a founder or an investor, I hope you can take something useful away from this talk. Um, most importantly, all of the data that we're going to touch on today comes directly from the 38,000 cap tables that are managed by Carta right now. So it is the freshest possible data on the private markets, and we hope that uh, it kind of guides some decision making over the latter half of 2023. So first, how did we get here? What should we take into context about what's going on in venture fundraising at the moment? We'll start with this chart. It's not a fun chart, but I do think it illustrates the point very clearly. In Q4 of 2021, collectively, startups on Carta raised about $66 billion. In the last quarter that was complete, Q2 of this year, they raised $17 billion, a drop of 75%. So when people talk about the crunch, the difficulty in fundraising right now, this is what they're talking about. And primarily, a lot of that drop is happening in the biggest companies, the biggest rounds. So for companies that are raising over $100 million in a single round, these mega VC rounds, 156 of those rounds happened in Q4 2021 to Carta companies, only 23 in Q2 of this year. So again, a massive fundraising drop and primarily in the late stage part of the VC market. But of course, fundraising isn't the only measure of a healthy startup ecosystem. You also have to look at startup valuations. And if you compare what's going on today versus Q1 of 2019, which of course feels like a lifetime ago, pre-pandemic and everything else, valuations aren't so bad. You know, Series A is up 60% over that time. Uh, Series B is up 29%. Series D down a little bit. But that's not usually the comparison that's going on in most people's heads. Most people are comparing Q4 of 2021, the very peak, to right now. And if you do that, things look a lot less rosy. You've got a 22% drop in median Series A valuations all the way down to a 71% drop in median Series D valuations. And this is really difficult for founders who have already raised a price round because they raised with certain expectations and then the goalposts were moved underneath them and they're having to compete in a totally new fundraising environment. So if you take those two measures that we've looked at, fundraising and valuations, and you plot them against one another, I think the dichotomy of what's going on at the early stage becomes super clear. Seed stage valuations up 11% since Q4 2021. The number of rounds in seed stage down almost 50%. So the best companies, we hear this a lot around VC world, the quote unquote best companies don't have trouble raising. That's true, but it doesn't actually address the vast majority of companies who are feeling a real crunch in terms of the deployment of capital. There's just less and less capital being deployed today than there has been in basically the entire time that Carta has been around, which uh, you know, effectively our data starts in really robust fashion from 2015 or so. So let's dig in a little bit on the rounds that are actually happening. 20% <clears throat> of the rounds on Carta today are down rounds. And a down round, as we know, is the any time that a company raises at a valuation that is less than the valuation of their prior round. In some ways, I take this as a bit of a silver lining. Uh, it's good to see that founders and investors are coming to the agreement that, hey, the sugar high of 2021 isn't actually reality, and we should come to a new you know, uh, agreement on what the valuations for our startup should be. But there's no doubt that Raising a down round is emotionally difficult. It's very difficult to keep morale high among employees when a down round happens, uh, but it is happening more and more across our startup user base. Unfortunately, not every company is able to raise even a down round. So if you take a look at this chart, it shows the number of startups that have gone bankrupt year by year off of the Carta platform. More startups have gone bankrupt this year than did all of last year already. And in Q3 and Q4, I expect that rate to actually increase. So this will be the worst year for startup bankruptcies since at least the uh, financial crisis. Um, and again, these are startups that we're showing in this chart that have already raised at least one priced equity round. So these aren't pre-seed companies in a garage. These are companies that have been backed by VCs already, and they are going out of business. 
it's like which startups, you might ask, are most at risk of these bankruptcies. We see a real inflection point in Series A to Series B. So if you're a Series A company right now, 75, 75 companies on Carta that have already raised the Series A round have gone out of business this year uh, versus 58 in all of last year. And again, I want to emphasize, I think that these numbers are an undercount. There are different things that startups do that may not look quite like going out of business, but effectively are the same thing. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of that happen at the Series A stage. But you can see across the board, seed stage, Series B, Series C, <clears throat> it's, it's a difficult world out there. So if you find a founder in the audience, you know, give them a hug. <laughs> um, so where are VCs spending their time and attention at the moment? It is going a lot more to bridge rounds than it ever has before. And let me define a couple terms here. A bridge round in our definition is any round that is led by a current investor on the cap table for a valuation that is flat or just a tiny bit up from the prior round and within the same named series. So you'd see a company raises a Series A round, and then they raise a Series A-1-preferred round. That's a bridge, an extension. Um, a ton of bridges are happening right now across the venture ecosystem. And broadly what that means is that more time and attention is being spent with their current portfolio than is being spent trying to invest in new companies. So primary rounds are down and bridge rounds are way up. And it's essentially, unfortunately, a competition among companies in a VC's portfolio for that double down cash, because they're not going to double down on all of the bets they've already made, maybe 5 to 10% of them. So it's, even for companies that are already funded, getting money from their current investors is a really difficult proposition at the moment. And even when they do get that money, deal structure has been reintroduced into the venture ecosystem. So these are all three terms that kind of favor investors versus founders when it comes to a new VC deal. Things like liquidation preferences on the left there, that's uh, liquidation preferences over 1x was the, the standard in VC these days. Participating preferred stock, when the VC gets to double dip, essentially, in any exits. Or cumulative dividends, which are, again, more investor than founder friendly. All of these terms are growing in terms of the percentage of times they, they show up in a given deal sheet. So founders, if you're not familiar with these terms, probably A, get a great lawyer, but B, become familiar with these terms yourself, because it is almost certainly going to be part of the negotiation that you're having with your VCs, either now or in 12 to 18 months. <clears throat> and the final point I'll make is that uh, time between rounds is up about 20 to 30% when we compare it to Q4 of 2021. The orange line in these charts is the average number of days between a primary round. The black line is the median number of days. So you can see in all cases, it's up and to the right. As you can imagine, fewer rounds happening means that founders are having to do more with less. Less cash going into these rounds, you're having to extend your runway. And that's when we get to all of the things that we've heard about, cash burn being decreased, software being harder to buy, harder to find, and of course, unfortunately, headcount being cut as well. Everything that a founder does to try to lengthen the amount of time that they can remain alive before they have to go fundraise again. And there's anecdotally a ton of talk about how <clears throat> fundraising was put off for the summer because the VCs were away, and now we're going to hop into a really significant fundraising season but those goalposts always kind of continue to move. Maybe 2024 is when the big fundraising is going to come back. Um, it, the, the real key takeaway here is that you're going to have to do war with less across all companies on Carta, from the smallest seed stage companies up to pre-IPO. <clears throat> so we've talked a little bit about the turmoil that's going on in fundraising. But what gets a few less headlines is how that impacts startup employees right now. The only thing that we really read about is layoffs, which are, of course, incredibly important to focus on. Um, so Carta knows about a, uh, an employee leaving a company because generally their equity grant is terminated when that happens. So we see it in our platform. And we can track it in two ways. One, that black line there is employees leaving by choice to go do something else, join another company, start their own thing. And the blue line is employees that are laid off. So you can see that the layoffs spiked super heavily in the beginning of that COVID pandemic with the uncertainty around there in April 2020. And then just kind of flatlined, and there were barely any layoffs happening across startups for a long time, whereas the great resignation, quote unquote, was happening in 2021, that black line there. 
And then those two things inverted over the last six to 12 months. And you've got layoffs peaking in January of this year, and thankfully they've gone down since then, though still kind of elevated. But you've also got that black line declining alongside the blue one. And what that tells me is startup employees are less likely to leave their job by choice right now than they have been in quite a while. And that means that companies are having to backfill quite a lot less. And so general startup hiring has slowed way down. In fact, the total headcount for companies, those 38,000 startups on Carta, has declined month over month for the last four months. It's never actually declined for more than one month consecutively since we've been in business. So a lot of, hire, or a lot of startup hiring has frozen. Uh, founders and executive teams are taking a look at what headcount they actually need, and that has having ripple effects through startup uh, labor dynamics as well. But of course, getting the job is only the first part. We also have to talk about compensation when you do get that new position. And salaries for startup employees are basically flatlined to a little bit down in recent months. So if you take the left side of this chart, in April 12, 2022, versus the prior quarter, startup salaries on average grew 5% for new hires. That is a really robust wage growth. That was a wonderful time to be getting a new job. Since then, it just kind of uh, plinks down, down, down to about flat right now. Um, so what's happening in this, and this is only entry level through director level employees, so we're not talking about VPs, we're not talking about C-suite people here. Um, so I would expect that these numbers would continue to sort of slowly plateau or maybe edge down through the latter half of this year. Um, they haven't turned deeply negative, which is a good thing, but they're certainly not keeping up with inflation. The other half, or even sometimes more than half, of startup compensation is those equity values. And uh, two important points to make here. So this is not on the chart, but we do see that a new hire's equity grant is about 10 to 15% lower than it was 18 months ago. And that's not because the valuation of the companies has changed. It's literally you're getting fewer shares of those companies when you join. Um, so startups are being very, very discerning, let's say, with how much equity they're giving new employees. And then startup employees, in turn, are really not exercising their equity right now. So as, we, as you may know, generally speaking, when you get equity at a startup, it's probably an incentive stock option. And in order for that to become real equity, you have to do two things. One, you have to vest that equity, which is stay at the startup for a given period of time. And two, you have to exercise that equity, actually buy it from the startup. Most employees that leave their companies right now have 90 days to make that buying decision. They have 90 days to exercise their equity. 75% of them are saying, no thanks. I'm just gonna let this equity return to the startup. And they're not buying it because they don't believe in the long-term prospects of that equity, which means that they're not willing to outlay any cash right now for the promise of that future upside. Makes some sense. You know, if you're reading in headlines, valuations down, the world is ending in startups, it's unlikely that you're gonna go and make personal financial decisions that put you out of cash right now. But it is a bearish signal for how employees are thinking about their equity overall. I have some hope that this is a lagging indicator and it actually isn't gonna get much worse than it is right now, but 28% is, as you can see in the chart, the lowest it's been in five or six years. So we've covered a little bit about where we've been and those impacts on employees. I wanna give you some insights, some new fresh data on where the market is right now. So valuations across these startups are starting to rise back up from recent lows, and that's good to see. Q3 numbers, that's literally pulled these two or three days ago, so as fresh as you can get. Series A valuations, median pre-money valuation for a Series A company on Carta is $39 million right now. Series B, 85 million. Series C, 255. Series D, 282. And you can see that those have slowly risen from the lows in about Q1, but they're nowhere near where they were in Q1 of 2022. You know, the average Series B companies, their valuation has basically been cut in half. We were talking about how much money goes into these rounds. Again, median for Series A is about $11 million or so. Median for Series B is 20 and a half million. Series C, 31 and a half. But again, if you compare those to Q1 of 2022, 50% haircuts, 
30% haircuts, 40% haircuts, whatever it is, they're down quite a lot. So reinforcing the message, venture capitalists, even when they do invest in your company, are expecting you to do more with less right now. Of course, those medians only give you one data point. So we like to break it out by actual industries. Um, this chart, each bubble in this chart represents an industry or vertical across Carta companies. The higher the bubble, the more cash raised in the Series A round. The further to the right, the higher the valuation. So you can see renewable energy, that green bubble at the top right. Those companies, only 21 of them raised so far in the first half of this year for Series A. But they're doing so at pretty high valuations and with a lot of cash. So renewable energy seems to be a fairly hot space right now. And then you can see the bubbles sort of trickle down into biotech, general SaaS, which of course we're all a fan of here, um, is always the biggest category, uh, B2B SaaS, uh, when we look at these metrics. And then some industries that are a little bit out of favor with venture capitalists at Series A right now, including, I'd say, primarily personal products there, uh, DTC retail, that kind of thing, not having a great summer in terms of fundraising. How much of your company should you expect to give up to investors when you raise those new rounds? So you focus on the white bubbles on the right here. The median Series A, you sell about 20% of your company to investors. The median Series B, about 18. The median Series C, 13. And the median Series D, 11. Those may feel like pretty high numbers, but they're actually basically in line with what they've been for the last five years or so. I think the key point here, if you look at the orange bubbles, is that median does not apply to everybody. There are super wide distributions. If you are the hottest new startup uh, working on AI, LLMs perhaps, you might only sell 5% of your company as Series A. If you are really struggling for cash, maybe you give up 30% or more. It really depends on the investor attention on your business and your negotiating leverage when you're having those conversations. <clears throat> the last thing that I'll note about the current market today is there was a hypothesis at the beginning of the year that all of this downturn in fundraising was going to cause this to be a really hot time for startup M&A. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't proven true. Uh, so about 150 or so companies are acquired off of Carta every quarter so far this year. That's basically in line with, with what it was in 2021 or a little bit down from 2022. There hasn't been a boom in startup acquisitions. Maybe it's big tech worried about, you know, uh, a ton of different things that they have to focus on right now. Private equity was a potential buyer, but they haven't really stepped in in a major way yet. So startups that were thinking, perhaps one of my options is to be strategically acquired, that's not as much of a route as perhaps they had envisioned at the beginning of this year. So I'm gonna run through three uh, remaining open questions as to what happens in the second half of 2023, and then uh, would love to hear from you all what's the most interesting part of the data world that we can answer for you. <clears throat> so first question, when venture rebounds, when we get back to a more healthy state, is that gonna happen in the same places that it used to in the States? So if you look back to 2021, the Bay Area took up about 40%, close to 40% of all invested capital onto Carta companies. In 2023, that's down to 31%. So venture as, a, as, a, uh, as an industry, as an asset class, is becoming more geographically diverse across America, which is kind of good to see. Although, of course, I do think the home of venture will always and forever be the Bay Area where we are right now. I did want to highlight something interesting that we saw in the data, that Boston line. Boston companies have raised more money this year than New York companies on Carta. That has never happened. Congrats to Boston. If you're from Boston, put it up. Well done. Uh, primarily on the back of a really strong biotech industry that seems to be somewhat immune to the fluctuations that are going on in other places across venture. So, Congrats to Boston, but I do think that some of the broader story here is places like Austin, San Diego, DC, Chicago, they're slowly growing over time to take up more and more share of total, of total venture capital. <clears throat> if we zoom out a little bit and just look at census regions, the one clear story is that the South is taking up far more venture capital than it did even, say, four years ago. It was only about 10% of investment onto Carta in 2019, and now it's 20%. Uh, 
Um, so again, those are cities primarily led by Austin as sort of the hub of venture capital in the South. But other Texas cities, you've got Raleigh, Durham, Triangle. You've got a little bit of Miami, though less than Twitter would have you think. Um, and, and just generally sort of a new dawn for venture capital in the South. <clears throat> so that's the first open question. The second open question, which really isn't so open. Apologies if you thought you were going to get through this talk without me mentioning AI. Uh, I was contractually obligated to do so. AI investing uh, impacting future fundraising. So looked at all the seed stage investments over the last nine months on Carta. The orange bar is investment into AI companies. The black bars are investment into everybody else. Q4 to Q1, AI investment rose 26%. Q1 to Q2, AI investment in seed stage companies is up 63%. And that is on a decline, basically, for the rest of the market. So the stories are true. AI is garnering a ton of attention, time, and capital from venture capitalists right now. Uh, I, I was kind of heartened to see that in Q2, everybody else got a little bit more money as well. Perhaps the venture uh, investment into AI won't completely displace investor uh, attention to other companies. But it's true, if it's an AI company that you're raising for right now, it's a lot easier than if you're raising for other companies. And those AI companies, as you can see from the right-hand part of this chart, they are getting higher valuations, and they are raising more cash per round. So the median seed stage valuation for an AI company is $16 million for the seed stage, and it's $13 million for everybody else. If you're an AI company, you get $4 million bucks in a seed stage round. Everybody else gets to do with $3 million. Bucks. So again, I didn't do a personal run-through of how AI these AI companies are. Are they thin wrappers on ChatGPT? Are they full LLMs? Who knows? But the venture investors seem to be giving them more time and attention regardless. And the last open question that we're going to touch on, a lot of headlines about this recently, secondary market trading, secondary liquidity. What this is, is any time that an investor, early employee, or founder sell shares in their startup pre-IPO. Uh, we can see that happen because we have access to the underlying data from the cap table. So anytime an equity value for a, a, a cap table participant changes, Carta knows about it. You can see that if you just focus on the bars, uh, $10 billion of startup shares changed hands across Carta companies in Q4 of 21. In Q2, that's down to $2 billion. So you may have read a lot of headlines about venture capitalists are trying to sell huge portions of their portfolios. That may be true. They may be trying to do it. It's still a really sluggish market in the secondary space. And that's because buyers and sellers are pretty far apart. You know, the average on Carta right now is that the buyer and the seller asking and selling price is about 20% off of each other. So they're, it, they're really not coming to any agreement about what these discounts should be to the last preferred round. I do think that as primary round valuations sort of rise in the latter half of the year, um, secondary markets will also rise. Uh, as soon as the primary rounds are more stable, it'll become easier for secondary participants to sort of come to an agreement about what a startup is worth. Um, but it's kind of, you know, you got to catch that falling knife right now, and it's, it's pretty hard. <clears throat> All right, so I wanted to save a bunch of time for questions, but key takeaways here. First and foremost, I believe that Q1 will be the bottom for startup fundraising. I think that we will continue to rise through the rest of the year, knock on wood, or not quite wood. But if you see a venture capitalist in the audience, hopefully they are also investing through Q3 and Q4. Number two, startup shutdowns are going to continue to rise through the next six to 12 months. You will see a lot of headlines about startups shutting down, startups being acquired, startups going out of business. And those are just the headlines. There's going to be a lot more companies that you don't see. Three, startup employees have lost the upper hand in compensation negotiations. So when you join a new company, know that you are negotiating in a very difficult negotiation environment versus your peers who may have joined their companies in 2021 or even early 2022. The power in those negotiations has flipped back to the employers. And four, AI investing is on the rise which is obvious, but other companies are still raising. So I think it is heartening to see that you don't have to be an AI company in order to get venture fundraising, but it helps quite a bit. 
If you found this data useful, if you just can't get enough data from Carta, we publish one chart per week from across our uh, startup database in our Data Minute newsletter. So you can scan that QR code there and sign up. It comes from 38,000 companies, 5,000 investment funds, 2,000, 2 million, excuse me, equity holders. We think it's the most robust private market database on the planet, and hopefully you'll join up and get a little bit of insight from that every week in your inbox. Thanks so much for listening, and happy to take your questions. All right, any questions out there in the audience about this data or anything you've been wondering about? Yeah, so if anybody did hear that, is there a parallel between AI investing now and crypto investing in the height of the pandemic? Um, insofar as there's always a hot topic in startups, yes. Uh, insofar as, personally, do I believe that AI companies are going to do more than crypto has with the money that they're receiving? Not at all. Yeah. Hi. Um, fantastic talk. Thanks for the data. It was really fascinating. Sure. You focused quite a lot on Series ABC. What's your take on the seed market, um, just at a high level in terms of valuations? Because the, I can see the trends with AI. I presume seed would follow three or four months later. But what's yeah. your view on seed? Seed has actually been the most robust part of the venture market. Well, pre-seed, we'll leave that aside for now. But seed has been actually quite robust for us. I think it peaked at about $15 million as a pre-money valuation. And now it's down to all the way to 13.8. So not a big drop. Mm. The difference is the level of funding, or excuse me, the number of fundraising rounds has, has lowered significantly. There's also been a trend that we've seen across our companies where uh, people are doing seed on safes more than they used to. So everyone has a different definition of how much you raise on a safe when it becomes a seed round versus a pre-seed round, those kinds of things. But we have seen, you could, have, you could envision it as founders and investors sort of kicking the can down the road with valuation mm -hmm. and raising a solid amount of money on safes instead of raising a priced equity seed round. Right. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Peter. Nice to finally meet you. We've talked a few times on LinkedIn. Uh, but the question is, there was a, a series of layoffs that we saw um, that happened first, deep cuts, Facebook, et cetera. Are you starting to see a lot of second cuts? Because a lot of startups have really tried to kick the can mm -hmm. down the road, extend runway, but now funding yeah. is still hard. Are you seeing that second wave? Definitely. I think that there is uh, sort of a, I don't know if it's an impending or if we're in the middle of it right now, but there's a wave of quiet layoffs that are not termed layoffs, but you know you might lose two or three percent of the employee base for two or three months instead of ten percent all at once, um, and that is happening. Uh, primarily, it's happening at like Series B and C companies more than C and A. Um, but yes, layoffs are definitely still up, and I'd expect that to unfortunately continue through. You know, I hope it ends before the end of this year. But if it continued through the end of this year, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. That was an excellent presentation. Just qu quick Appreciate question. It. Globally, do you think the themes run? I think there is. So the question was, globally, are we seeing the same? Unfortunately, I don't have the same level of data for Europe and LATAM and Asia that I do for the US. Uh, anecdotally, yes, I, I, I think the same themes are probably pretty apparent with perhaps an even steeper decline in many cases. I think. You can think of it as there's so much money available to seed stage companies over the next two to three years in the US that it can only fall so far. I don't think that's necessarily true in other ecosystems. Yeah, cheers. Hi, Peter. Nice to see you in person. Uh, I was wondering if like, other types of investments in tech companies were rising, such Ooh. as venture debt or media for equity. I don't know yeah. what. So there was a big decline in venture debt available to US firms, at least, after the collapse of SVB. That has been a down in the market for venture debt in particular. Uh, we are seeing that come back. You know, other forms of investing, non-dilutive uh, investing on, you know, getting advances essentially on your revenue, uh, crowdfunding, et cetera. Those are all options that people are looking into. I think the biggest thing is that we've seen a lot of companies that have already raised price equity turn back to safes or convertible notes. Uh, in between price rounds. So that has been, uh, you know, people are trying to do that as much as possible now. There's just kind of a focus on, hey, 
if I don't have to do a price round, I'd rather not do it right now. And so they are turning to all sorts of creative other financing methods. Cheers. Hello. For exits, are you seeing the multiples decline as well or not? Absolutely. Yeah. So one, way fewer exits. I mean, we're going to get an IPO or two here in the near future, Clavio and others. Like, we need that door to reopen um, in order for real exit values to come back up. But even on uh, mergers and acquisitions, like those multiples, I think I was just looking at this this morning. The difference between a seed stage company and a Series C and median valuation used to be 30 times, and now it's 15. So that compression is like running its way through the stack. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, just curious, do you guys also capture information on safe? Yes, we do have, the question was, do we have any information on safes? On safes, yeah. Um, yeah, we have a ton of information on safes. Actually, on our website right now, there's a state of pre-seed report. You can download and it tells you, I think it tracks for the first half of this year, 11,000 safe notes. Um, so it gives you things like what's the median val cap, what's the discount, what are the terms applied, post money, pre-money, all that stuff. Um, in general, the safe market has been more robust than the other parts of venture. So it's been holding up okay. Uh, and I, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be continued to be like the default way to fundraise for a pre-seed company. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course.